Yes, for many in the Northern Hemisphere, and certainly the fans of France and Ireland, this is the final that never was. And therefore, not just the whole of the sport in Europe is watching, but the rugby world has its eyes firmly fixed on the next two potentially captivating hours or so. We'll just take a moment to focus on rugby's full-time on hate campaign, the Six Nations standing against any form of discrimination, racism, hate, speech or abuse. That message being conveyed to the crowd now. Great venues, nearly ready for the Marseillaise, one of the great anthems. It will follow Ireland's call, of course. Yes, maybe to have been in Paris tonight, with all those recent memories, could have been too much to bear for these two. France, Ireland, in Marseille, it feels right. Captains. Hey! Oh, yeah, he's winning. Guinness Six Nations coverage, sponsored by Motorway. Vitality gets your health moving forward. How? They give you half-price gym membership. <laughs> yeah, give me five more, Gary. Move forward with Vitality. When you share a hotel room with your kid, you also share a bedtime with your kid. But if you get an Airbnb, you get to pick your own bedtime.
Jesus! Woo! Yep, he's winning. Guinness Six Nations coverage, sponsored by Motorway. Welcome back to what should be a night to remember. It's been a day to remember. Crystal clear blue skies and now a sharpness to the night air. And that should be in keeping with the players' mindset for this one. Referee is Carl Dixon of England, by the way, who did get to the World Cup final as an assistant to the now-retired Wayne Barnes, who refereed last season's never-to-be-forgotten encounter in Dublin. The Grand Slam winners of 2022 against the Grand Slam winners of 2023 as the 2024 Guinness Men's Six Nations burst through the door again. No time, no! A man in for Dupont. Luku gets excellent distance on his first kick. Yeah, fascinating evening. There's inevitably a lot of chat about the couple of players who aren't here, Johnny Sexton and Antoine Dupont, but that guy, Maxime Luku, and Jack Crowley in place of Johnny Sexton. Actually, these aren't two teams. It's fascinating because these aren't two teams that are talking about rebuilding, talking about starting again in a four-year World Cup cycle. Two of the best teams in the world going flat out with selection straight after the World Cup. Fantastic. Take from Ty Byrne at that first line out from Dan Sheehan, who didn't miss a line out. Always found his jumper at the World Cup when he did play. Into the side has come Joe McCarthy, and he gets an early touch as well. Charge down. And France have it with Luku and Ramos. Here's James Lowe. Come on, Green! It's covered by the scrum half, did well. Knew where he had to go, and going his own sweet way is Jalabert, like he loves to do. Carried over halfway by Francois Cross. Lukou, early hands here with Jalabert again. On to Ficou, might be an extra player. That player is Peno, but the flag is up. So dangerous, Damien Peno, so dangerous, France. I just think Slick. Just showing the just the danger that France hold there. Everything Luku involved, a couple of quick passes there, just the turnover here, Jalibert, the feet going into it. But this pass off this rook from Luku just cuts out three, four Irish defenders, and that creates the mismatch in the wide channel. And this is a fantastic tackle from Hugo Keenan. Just keeps Ireland in that point. Here's Sheen again. Let's Ireland go, cut go. the line out this time. A bit of movement works well for them. Gibson part back to that left boot of James Lowe, so often used to effect to get that distance. Up from Ramos. Peno chasing the high ball this time. Opposite winger Lowe, swivelling out of any contact there. His reporters push back. Van de Fleer gets to ground against Antonio. Gibson Park is brilliant at this, the hang time on those kicks. Highest average hang time in the competition last season. On average 4.2 seconds, he gets that ball in the air for the willing chasers. It's a major asset. Nice from by, just tucked it round the corner, but that's not good from France. Low came in. Olivon's got to be careful. He's offside there. Never Referee onside. has Two. called the offside. Crowley 
gets it away to uh, Van der Fleer again. Advantage for Ireland to play with here. Crowley again, inside ball, the selection. He's mixing it. And so is this bat, of course, in a different sort of way. Bandiaki, but back for the offside. Against Malvarka in the end. Olivon played by the book. Malvarka didn't. Well, it's a fast start for sure from both sides. I just wonder with France, I wondered on the far side if Fiku gave it a bit early to Peno and enabled Keenan to make that tackle. I wondered then, going for the corner, I wondered then if Tomai Ramos just pushed that a bit early, led to the intercept. Could have worked out a lot worse for France that they ultimately had it covered. Just a little bit of rust, starting fast, lots of tempo, not quite looking slick yet. This is bold from Ireland, I like it. That's as well, a little bit uncharacteristic from France. We've heard Sean Edwards at length saying, do not play in your own half. Setting up for the kick there from Luku, and ultimately they just playing the ball out. And uh, James Lowe saying big in the channel and getting the turnover. But very uncharacteristic from the French. You normally see them kicking, looking for distance or comp uh, competing in the air there. It's good from Crowley, right towards the corner. His captain will like that, Peter Armani. 11th time that he's led his country. But a great record of nine out of ten. And he's right in there, calling for the muscle. In they come from the backs as well. Bundyaki, James Lowe involved as well. Off goes Sheen. He's got support from Robbie Henshaw. The switch from Gibson Park to find Bundyaki. He finds a Tonio. There's Tyg Byrne getting the ball to the floor again. Nice target that he makes. McCarthy, he's been brought in for moments like this. It's where he's carried so well recently in Leinster colours. So too, Van der Fleer, arm out again from Carl Dixon. It's another penalty. Another free play then. Gibson Park goes wide and a bit wild. Why not try it, see if it's on. Two players offside. 13 and 1. Really enjoying Joe McCarthy's first few minutes. He's been brought in, as you oh. say, Miles, to knock people around in defence and carry that ball hard into heavy traffic. That's just what he's doing. I yeah, think you can, you can see there. it. Okay. Yeah, Just having a quick look at this and Jonathan Dante getting over the ball. <laughs> the speed of the ball there from Ireland, really important to how they're able to keep going and forcing and getting that penalty from the French. He's on the Joe McCarthy. He's taking two, three French defenders with him every time, and it's just it helps with the speed of the ruck for Ireland. So really good start from uh, the young man on debut. This is a dream for Crowley. Virtually from the football penalty spot, he gets his first three points of the night. And Ireland get reward for a strong, aggressive start. Really good start, loads of tempo. France are really pushing it ball in hand. And as you say, Gordon, Jamison Gibson Park, there are a few better in the world at getting that ball up and away. Lots of tempo, really interesting start. Plenty of hang on that Inside. free start from Mathieu Jalabert. He's in for the still injured Roman Untamac. Of course, missed the World Cup. Get inside. Out here, Green. Uh, being Dupont's regular halfback partner, but Lucou and Jalibert are flying for Bordeaux Bergler, their club. We're going to fly again here. No! That's good carrying. Olivon takes it on a crucial two or three First metres more. But it's Ireland who win the breakdown penalty. Man, and look who it is, leading by example. And it's a really good play from Ireland. You can see what they're doing this the second time now. James Lowe has kept the ball purposefully in field. They're happy to give the ball back to France, inviting them in for the counter-attacking. See Hino Keenan leading the kick chase, but they're waiting in behind. Once that first tackle is made, Peter Omani straight in over the ball. This is a tactic from Ireland that they're targeting that ball on the, uh, on the return. I mean, you might call that the merest hint of not initially supporting his own body weight in that both of his hands are on the floor. That's been missed. These things happen. But it is brave to invite France to counter-attack, is brave. You've got to be very, very confident your defence is going to hold up. This time it did. So there Omani tackles, he then has to release, then he can get stuck 
back in there again, but what he can't do, his hands can't go beyond the ball on the floor to support his body weight. They can tap the floor very, very quickly, but if there's any hint of that body weight being supported, that's not allowed. Yeah, he's got to keep his balance, and what he did then was put both his hands on the floor to achieve balance before he nicked the ball. Okay. Not allowed to do that. Okay, mate. So one that Ireland get away with, they will have to replace their check, check. prop forward here, Andrew Porter. Check. And a little bit more maybe than Whitehouse as the television match official. Should have mentioned that Matthew Carley and Jordan Way are the assistants running the touchline. Okay. Carley of England, Way of Australia. It's not the best angle, there's another one coming up now. Okay. I think you keep your eye on Porter here, We're looking if that's a headshot from Valemsa, okay, which it is. Okay, yeah. okay, so, Ben, um, we do have head contact, and it is foul play, and it meets the yellow card threshold. Yes, I agree. That. Okay, so can we got a number, please? Five, five, reach this yellow card threshold, bunker review. So that will now be reviewed. Remember in the World Cup, we had the bunker. We have it in the Six Nations as well. Goes to bunker review. It's now under review. Eight minutes still the time for the okay, official there, the foul play just review just officer, really to have a look at this up. incident there, and to make a call. Yeah, Stay yellow red or red. up to red. There's just one okay. reviewer okay. officer so looking on now. OK, time back on, please. And there will be, we're told, a direct explanation from the on-field referee to the crowd via the PA system when the decision is announced. So we'll wait to hear that, as will Paul Willemsa, a nervous man at the moment. I tell you what, when you see a player get a yellow card and have absolutely no argument on his face whatsoever, he's had a look at the big screen, he's seen what happened, and he won't like the fact it's a yellow, but he will be thrilled that is not a red. That was punchy. There was so much movement, people were low. I think yellow is right. But in the words of football commentators, you've seen them given. You've seen them given. Put the shoulder to the head. We need to see what the bunker review comes up with. Now, can Ireland take advantage of the extra player? We have a look at Calvin Nash into the side. The first time in this competition made his debut against Italy in the summer in the World Cup warm up. He's been in fine form for Munster on the wing. With Mac Hansen out injured, it's Nash who's got the selection, but it's going away from his wing at the moment to the far side. And there's Robbie Henshaw. There's so much rugby of late internationally, this just his fourth test in 15 months. In for the injured Gary Ringrose, who should be fit next week, we're told. Here's Nash again, little chip over the top, let's see what he can do. Looks for the bounce, Ramos is there. So too is Moefana. They had to act quickly, they did. There was a little hint of panic about it. It's high risk from Ramos again at the back. Lots of Irish jerseys there. They're pushing it. Yeah, you know, when it's French, they just do this so often. In every game they're playing, the club games, they're happy to throw the ball, not throw the ball around, they're getting it away, creating an angle to try and build a kick. And Lecou takes it on himself. His first start in the competition, it's his 19th cap. Of course, he's had to be patient when you think who is behind. Ireland very keen to get that ball wide as quickly as they can, really stretch the French defence. Certainly now they're a man down. We'll see if they're a man down for another seven minutes or any longer when the bunker okay. outcome is made clear. Green. There's a few big men in that French side and the Irish look keen to make them run when they haven't got the ball. Well, Scotland and Italy all watching this match knowing that these two in recent form they're out in front here's Gibson Park and McCarthy again he cuts that 45 degree angle and he takes some stopping so too Caelan Doris but they do manage in his opposite number Aldrich to drive him across field a little bit Crowdy with a chip in behind, but it's gone too far. 
I think Crowley may have thought he might have been looking at a penalty there. Some very French, very a brilliant play. And Pedro chasing, the ball will go out, but yes, it was quick thinking. You've got to love that. No McNamara talking about Damien Penno. He said, I don't coach him. We just see Jack Crowley here. Maybe the right idea. Execution not exactly where it needed to be, but Damien Penno, live wire, ready for the quick 22. Hits this, but I'd say no McNamara. He doesn't coach him, he just tells him, what does he want to do? And he tells him, yep, you just go do that. Kind of quick thinking that just burns through a bit of time of the uh, Simbin period. Gets Ireland back inside their own territory, trying to work their way out. First with Ben Lefleur, now with the boot of Gibson Park again. Penno got himself for once in a bad position there. Really, the odds on were that he was not going to catch that, but it's not going to be costly. Claire Rock was formed the corner hands and then you pulled it away. It's just, it's a noisy old stadium. We've mentioned that. Hell of an atmosphere here in Marseille, but you've got to find a way to hear what the ref's telling you to do. Easy for us at home, he's got a microphone on, but you've got to listen out. The no hands call was clear. Tyke Byrne just didn't let it go. Yes, lucky he's got long arms because he was bang out of position there, but he rescued it, didn't he? Just about. Throw to Oliver, the man who could have been leader, used to be leader. Gautier going with Oldra to the absence of Dupont. The coup was mentioned. There he is in midfield, turning it back to Lecou, that's aggressive, again from Ireland. Typical young McCarthy, that. Described by his captain this week as destructive, and we saw it there. Mark called for by James Lowe, and you do that inside your 22. He knew exactly where he was. It was lovely from Joe McCarthy there was just the little chop steps while he was waiting for Luku to get the ball in his hands. No room for error for him on the penalty. He wasn't willing to give one over. But as soon as Luku has that ball, it looks like it's a sloppy pass out to the right. McCarthy accelerating into the contact. There it is. Takes an age over that ball. McCarthy gets in. Targets nice and low. Really good play from uh, McCarthy again. It's your turn. The coup to Ramos. They're not calling for the mark this time. He's got plenty of time. Just drill that kick. The two are just trading at the moment. Ramos and Low. Low eats up the space. Why not? It was in front of him. He's put a lot into this. He'll be hoping it just doesn't roll and roll. Because if it does, it's a scrum all the way back. Oh. Just for a second. The ball was Irish. He's going to say he, uh, he put Perfect. the little sand wedge in. Wanted it to stop, about three inches before the uh, dead ball line. Yeah, put a bit of backspin on it, perfect. He's got away with that, hasn't he? Oh. Made most line breaks in the competition off, last captains. season, James Lowe. Such a threat with ball in hand. Okay. Here we go then, the uh, decision. Okay. Okay. So, review of the yellow card, it's going to remain a yellow card because there's a drop in high, high island one for the contact. OK, happy? OK, let's go. As I, as, I, as I said at the time, I think because there was so much movement, body heights were changing, I think it was always likely to remain a yellow. But if you can be thrilled to receive yellow, that's what he is, because that was a big shot right in the noggin. When he used his head, Willemser to uh, nod with approval in the end. He's happy. 
and France continue to survive this tricky period. Henshaw off to Bundyaki. This will test them now. Gets a ball, goes himself, he scores and does. The Grand Slam champions, but a team with unfinished business in the season in general and in this spell with Willemse off the field. I could just see lots of movement from here. James Lowe does really, really well in contact here. Jack Crowley carrying it out the back, lots of movement outside, but James Lowe's got a lot of work to do. He's getting in here, fights for the ball. This tip on from uh, Robbie Henshaw, absolutely vital, but look at that trail line from Gibson Park. How many times do we talk about Anton Dupont on that trail line? Gibson Park following in from the rook. The little show to the right, happy to run on it as close as he could to the posts. And you have the work rate from the big man, Bundiaki. He's involved twice in two phases, recycles himself. First, he pulls the ball out the back. Of course, the size and power of him, he's a good decoy. Puts that ball away, recycles himself, makes the break off the tip on, then the offload. Brilliant play from the centre. And Crowley. Well, that was a good moment for him. They are the bread and butter ones that he made sure. And Gibson Park made sure as well. Nothing this time that even Penno can do. Really nicely worked again. Wrapping around, it's just quick work from Ireland, quick ruck speed, quick recycling of the ball. France, a man down, hard to get around the corner. Maybe hard to get in the air as Tyg Berman, he uh, leapt to help out his colleagues there, and that was a nice pullback from Sheehan in midfield, and there he goes again, the left of Lowe. Smacking it long. That's straight back to where he needs to be and takes it on the run. Jaliberto catches him, having made the kick himself. The chase from the French fly half. Paul Gebrag put to the floor his first call since 2019 in the French second row. Willemser, first test since August. He missed the World Cup, the man who's been the symbol because of a thigh injury. There's Fiku to Gibson Park, the try scorer. Off the side of the boot from Crowley. Confidence, nice to see. Ramos, Gibson Park, backpedalling. How about Jamison Gibson's Park positional play? Just fantastic. Repeatedly, right place, right time. Brilliant. Yeah, he's got the sat nav. Absolutely spot on, hasn't he, as a player? Just see Ireland just creeping up on the uh, like the possession, but also on the territory where they're playing. Really, you know, Ireland dominating possession now, 61%, almost up at 20 minutes. Um, happy with the ball, really coming out on top on the kicking battle at the moment, which is quite uncharacteristic. Players coming back, Willemse out of the sim bin, and apologies to Keir Healy, although you've got many mentions, Keir, over the years, to be fair. 126 cap, he was on as the replacement there to Andrew Porter. Porter back on, having been checked. Oh, good charge down by Byrne. Can he find the ball? He does! Lukou put under real pressure there. Gibson Park, he just wants to free it. Furlong knows that. Crowley and Bundyaki was through. Crowley knew it as well. He'd seen the space. What a chance. Keenan was arriving on a line and look at his outstretched arms. All, I, all I've got is a knock at the moment. Oh, he's got his head always got, got his, got his, his got a, a knock on. You can see that hole opening up as he's about to run through. You see Ty Byrne coming off. Perfect block. We just want to see the picture of the pass. Crowley has a time to perfection. I mean, the pullback before uh, this, tag, tag, oh, it's just caught. The on. pullback from Tyke Furlong off. was something else, wasn't Stay it? A bit up. of skill in contact. It looks like it's just caught a fingertip on the way through that. OK. Yeah, Peter, nothing clear, let's go. Tyke Byrne looks, he might look like he's offside before he charges down Maxime Luku then, but because he began them all in an offside, in an onside position and just ended up there, having not changed his binds or anything like that, Green he is ball. allowed to come off the back, so it's clever play from Tyke Byrne. Let's go, first scrum. 
Knock on, no by blue. In the tackle, that's all we got. No, no, I got knock on by blue in the tackle, that's it. So it will be Ireland to put in. It was nearly Crouch. so much more. Crouch. Still might be. They're looking threatening. Crouch! They're in a lovely spot here. Big old blind side for Five. France to think about. Defending. Six. Options everywhere. Nothing clear for me. Let's go again. Enthusiastic reaction from the Irish pack here to the scrum down. They want another. Just hit square, both players, please. Let's go. Yep. Sometimes they fall over, Miles. That's what happens. It's the physics of the thing. You've got um. You've got two men. You've got Nash and Crowley. Crowley just lining up directly behind the scrum, just keeping, just keeping Fine. France guessing. Set. Oh, could go either way, those two. They're hovering. We concentrate on the scrum. They are coming back to this side. The Gibson part onto Crowley. He puts his foot down now as again it opens up in front of him. Allowed a bit too much space there from a French point of view, not from an Irish. Here's Van der Fleer. Gibson part looks. He lets the forwards do the work. How much work have they done? Held up first. Not Held up quite first. enough. Whoever was at the whatever French hand was in there holding that ball in on the previous rook had saved a certain try. There was must have been 20 meters between the rook and the nearest French defender, Josh van der Fleer, coming in and they just managed to hold that ball up, slow it down, saving an almost certain certain try. I think it might have been Gregory Aldrit in there. He he tried for the turnover, he got cleared out hard by Caelan Doris, but I think he kept an arm in there. Perfectly legal, I'm yep. sure. No, no, we go. <laughs> Perfectly legal. We go. Isn't that? We often applaud the intricacy of the of the Irish play. That was just stick it on the blind side, see what happens. Actually, really good gains, really good attack from Ireland, keeping it simple. Off goes Caelan Doris again. His 30th consecutive test penalty in front of the post. Gibson Park. Yeah, you can feel the temperature of the match. You could tell that he wanted to go, but just resisted. This is very much three on the just table, the waiting to be eaten up. And they're going for goal, and it's Gregory Aldrit. Again, we, we, he was very close to a turnover on his own line, or very close to it. it. Just felt like it was held up, and then players on the four, more than one, yeah. were pushing the ball back. We're like trying to practice to not fucking and take that extra, extra bit, so okay. we'll endeavour to get that ball back okay. as quickly oh, as we can. Perfect, okay, thanks. It's the blind side play from Ireland, very, very simple. Just seeing what gives, seeing if they need to put it through the hands. The space opened up, it is Aldrit in there, he just keeps a hand in. Not just short, just short. Jeepers, that's close. Okay. Okay. Great, thanks very much, mate. This is where you use Sexton Wood, O'Gara Wood. And long before them, Campbell Wood and Ward Wood. And Crowley now. No, he can't. He built him up to fall down. <laughs> well, it's all part of the learning for him. There'll be no knee jerk to that, but it was three points that Ireland, in normal circumstances, would have been expecting. Yeah, like, there's lots and lots of rugby to go in this game, but the scoreboard pressure ball. in tight games like this. You expect France are going to get Stand points up. on the board. You need to be, have the uh, scoreboard ticking over as often as you possibly can. Gibson Park has dropped. This mistake from Joe McCarthy. He's been making many of late. Well, I often think if you're you're a fly half and you're under a bit of pressure to Second kick points and you miss what would normally be described as a sitter. Course, it's quite an isolated course, place to be. If you're a front five forward and you knock a ball on and the opposition don't pick it up, you get a chance to pile back into the game via the set scrum. So he gets a chance to make up for it now behind his mate, Tyg Furlong, give him everything and see if they can disrupt the French pack. It'll take some doing, mind. There might have been a bit of fruity language on the microphone picked up. 
So I'm sending apologies, apologies on that. It was very noisy in the stadium. Crouch! And you can just see France gone with the 3-3 split Find. either side. So opening up that midfield scrum, opening up Set. both sides. They had the kick run option on both sides now, so just want the clean ball. Luku at the base now. It is going to be a France penalty. Oh, Henshaw. See how keen he is. The whistle is gone. They're going between themselves on that far side. Pedos looking for once. I'm not going to take it on. They've got me, but it's back over to where the scrum was for the scrum penalty. They won 15 scrum penalties at the Rugby World Cup. France, only South Africa. I thought you started to square by a point, of course, in the quarterfinal. One more. Okay, I'll have a look. If I miss it, I apologise. I'll have a look. It was scrappy at the back of the I scrum. Really good pressure from Jamison Gibson Park, but it didn't matter. France had the penalty anyway, and a lot of the penalties they won. The 15 you mentioned, I'll come from Weenie Antonio on the tight head. He's not just big, he's good. He's strong. He's gone up a notch the last couple of seasons in terms of scrum pressure, scrum aggression. There he is in the background. I think he claims he's 23 stone. I'm not having that, I'm afraid. But he's done the work now to give this guy a shot at goal. Yeah. And when you now you look at the opportunity cost of what's happened, Crowley missing three points. Two minutes later, two errors. Ramos stepping up for a big kick. Ramos has got the distance. And he's judged the direction as well to perfection. Little shot there, the team manager, Rafael Ibanez. Former international yeah. hooker for France, of course. Delighted that his team are up and running. But it's not the brutal reality in elite sport at this. France have done very little to earn that three points. But just by being proficient at the scrum, having a kicker there ready to take the opportunity, they close that gap to seven points. Scrum's a hard work, you know, Gordon. Oh, stop. He didn't just lean in, you know, the big fella. He pushed. Very contestable, wasn't it? The restart kick that time went a long way, but very well directed. Brilliantly chased by Hugo Keenan. It was a really good tackle, and France forced to be more conservative on their exit now. It's a really good exit, brilliant kick from Maxime Lucu. But that was a really good restart, you're right, and a brilliant chase. One or two of the French players. I might have thought that was just touched in flight by an Irish hand, but no, the call from the officials. It will be Ireland to throw into this line out. It continues to go well. And De Fleer to Gibson Park. Here's Crowley again, really coming into the game with ball in hand now as well. Crowley's just a different player when he attacks the ball at pace like that getting over the line, getting the ball into Calvin Nash's hands. Put an arm on the again. Foot. Gibson Park to Crowley, and then... It's Robbie Henshaw just shoving it over the game line, just those extra couple of metres which keep the momentum. Hands were good initially from Furlong, he knew he had to get it out there quickly. Here's Ty Byrne. Spent a lot of this first half on the attack in the French half. Ireland, they will want the half-time score to show for it as well. Didn't quite have that just yet. They won't be complaining, but they will be greedy here. Crowley thought about putting it on the boot. He didn't have to. He did not have to because once again, it was a little bit of an open-door policy from France in defence, and Ty Byrne is the man to take full advantage of it. Jack Crowley has just held the ball so nicely. Jonathan Dante has tried to shoot up out of the line, take him completely with him out of the ball, out of it, and Crowley's just waited, let him do all the work, and just popped the ball back into it. You can just see, here it is. He's, he's just standing there, standing there, and it's Movaka who's gone up to hit him, and he's hung out Jonathan Dante there. Exactly what Ireland needed, exactly what Jack Crowley needed, and you watch his eyes as he gives that pass. His eyes are going out the back, but he gives it flat to Tygburn. It's a brilliant last minute, this last second decision at the line, incredibly difficult to defend. 
a very intelligent line from a big man, but that pass, that coolness at the line, fantastic from Crowley. Credit the 10. And that miss kick, long forgotten now. Tyke Burn steaming through. Well, look at the eyes, the head just swivels a bit further. He's looking out the back. Very clever. Half an hour gone. What a start for the champions. Long way to go, not just in the season, but in this match as Caelan Doris brings it back. But there's no World Cup hangover here from Ireland, maybe for France. He's been but they have play been on. undone, the home side, by quality play. Okay, on in front, hold now. Hold, hold, hold. Well, we see James Lowe just mixing up his uh, kicking game. Probably came off the outside of his boot a little bit more than he would have liked to. Um, but yeah, not looking to invite more pressure back on them just straight after scoring a try like that. Getting the ball into the safety of touch, breaking up the tempo of the match. Just interesting now to see if Ireland get off the ground and compete with this, or if they're sufficiently worried about the French mall, the size of them. Oh no, we're having a look at something. I wondered if it's Paul Valencia okay. again. It is, yeah. Okay. Uh, big shot. Okay. He's already had a yellow card. Six. I just thought for a man who's Second. just come out of the bunker, yeah. he wasn't holding back. Could be in the clubhouse in a minute. And at the time, I think Carl Dixon saw it and thought and said that's all right. But it's a big old shot. Considering he's just back off a yellow, have a look at this. There's a good chance this is another we yellow. Go on the head and neck area. So, uh, yes. We do have head contact, yes, we do have foul play because the player's sitting up, so it does meet the yellow card threshold. Yes. That's his second yellow card. Still said it's the Yeah, still second yellow card, OK? So, um, it's going to be a yellow card against uh, five. It's impossible to take off. So, it's going to the bunker for review to meet the threshold. It's a yellow card. And it's the second yellow card, so it's a red card. Yeah, it's a red card. Yeah, okay. Two yellows make the red. So just get the mark over here, so it's a penalty, isn't it? And Paul Willemsup has had a night that yeah. he will want to forget. To where I am. It has come to yeah, a premature a end. France are struggling anyway. That puts them at a massive disadvantage. Very important player for France, Paul Willemsa. But when you're on a yellow, you've just got to change what you're doing, you've got to think more. And actually, the tackle he made was a massive impact, and he was always going to run the risk. Now and again, you might see someone get away with that, but he's running a risk, and the tackle was already made anyway. Well, actually, the second man in, and that is that is where all these cards are coming from. You're a second man in, you talk about this dynamic movement or the change of body height, something happens with the tackler, and you're planted there with your shoulder. You can't be going in, in uh, with that type, of, uh, for that type of second man in into a tackle anymore. So just to explain, I think uh, our referee Carl Dixon was maybe a little bit confused there. Matt Carley was on the scene just to make sure in the bunker it can't be downgraded from a yellow. So we got to the yellow situation, it had to be a red straight away and was. We'll bring in Benjamin Kaiser in a moment on that. That's maybe a little bit too pumped up there, a bit too much adrenaline. You understand it from Jack Crowley. Let's go down to the touchline. Benjamin, that is a massive blow, of course, for France. Absolutely, a huge blow after a, a very dominant three minutes pretty much for France and then after that, that's clear domination from Ireland, putting tremendous amount of pressure and then causing a little bit of lack of lucidity on the French side and this second yellow was definitely not what the, the French camp was, was expecting after honestly being a little bit lucky in the first one. Now uh, it's going to be a long, a long half time trying to talk the strategy, trying to get those things uh, back in order, trying to use maybe the bench to uh, fill in the, the power slots that um, Paul Willemsen was obviously bringing. But first, you've got to finish this first half, stay disciplined, and please, please, let's put some points on the board. Let's see what Luku can do here. He took them on on the fringe of that ruck. 
But it's mayhem caused again by uh, McCarthy. He has a look at the referee. What can I get away with? Was written all over his face. It was a great steal. Uh, 12 months ago, Joe McCarthy would have been giving away that penalty, and something he's really conscious of, bringing that physical element to his game, but keeping the discipline so he's not undoing all the good work that he has. He's taking the space. He's taking the space. Two. That's Dan he's Sheehan. Taking the space. Back it in. He's just got to give France a fair opportunity. He's got to stay on side, stay out of the way, and give France a fair opportunity to play that ball. He's encroached, got himself, he's promoted himself too far, couldn't resist. But you're right about Joe McCarthy. He is looks to be a well-disciplined player, but geez, he's putting it about tonight. He's getting in amongst it. He might have dropped the ball a couple of minutes ago. Who cares is what he says. He's moved on. And he's just a very annoying presence for the French at this stage. We really do need something you feel before half time. It wouldn't be terminal for their chances if they didn't. This is France and Marseille. Could be a very different side in the second half. Could be a very different side here as we approach the interval. But how they love a score at this point to not just rev themselves up, but this crowd, this famous crowd here in Marseille as well. Aldrich trying to do his leading from the front. He's got He's a penalty. Over you. This player has tripped over you. Roll away, please, before Jackler. It's Peter Omani there. His turnover is fine. But Roll actually, first. a French player coming before in to clear that ball has tripped over Andrew Porter, who is in an off offside position. So you just got someone lying offside in the way. It's the referee returning to that phrase, trying to clear the space <laughs> around the halfback yes, behind the breakdown. Uh, Ireland have been very good at putting pressure on Luku today. I think he's only had, he's only managed to get one half break um, in and around the ruck, but they've really targeted him, looked to put pressure on him, and try and disrupt him as much as they possibly can. I think they've been, they've been pretty good and pretty consistent at that today. Here we are, nearly 35 minutes played, and only a second visit to the Ireland 22 by France, and it might not last for much longer because. Or stolen at the line out by Ireland, who keep producing the plays that matter here. Gibson Park to low. It's that combination again. And this time there's no outside the boot, there's no slice. And it's a good time to get off the ground at that line out for Ireland. Very often you see teams stay on the floor to defend them all and not risk lads being in the air and not being able to hit the deck and work. But France have just lost a second row, they've just lost a key man in the line out. That will be the hardest line out they throw. The first one after a second row gets sent off where you're rejigging, recommunicating. Good quick thinking from Ireland. Yeah, there's a definite confidence about the Irish line out at the moment. So that's gone forward. A little bit of confusion for France. At the line out without their second row, as David was pointing out. About Paul Willemson. An auspicious return. And they've also lost a 130 kilo lot from their scrum, so it might not come now. They're still reasonably fresh, half an hour or so in. But you'd imagine a man down in the pack, Seconds. you'd imagine Ireland will really try and squeeze them here, really try and put yeah. some heavy work into Maxine. their legs. Maxine. Get the big men tired. Close. You're Close. casting your mind back to World Cup squads. Thibaut Flamont is out injured at the moment. Cameron Wockey is Let's on go. the bench. I'm trying as loud as I can, mate. I'm talking to Maxine. And starting engine room with a giant of a man. About to burst onto the international scene, Emmanuel Murfu. He was going to be seconds. part of this squad, but he's out injured at the moment. Roman Tar Offi Fadnua, a giant lock. He went down ill yesterday. Bind! So Pasolo Tuilangi. Tuilangi, yes, you heard right. In the French squad, 19 years of age, weights on the bench. Use their weight pretty well there, France. They did, as soon as it went down, it went down on the far side. Weenie Antonio is streaking to the ref, which doesn't normally mean much, because a lot of props scream at the ref, whether it's their fault or not, frankly. 
But it's just a couple of times now, Andrew Porter on the loose head, the Irish loose head has been deemed to just effectively go straight to ground, which means he sort of whacks into Antonio and the weight drives him down a little bit. Perhaps needs to get a, a touch lower in the hips and try and hold the big fella up a bit easier said than done. Yeah, and I think just regardless of a red card, you do not want to be inviting this much pressure on yourselves. You're going to give a team like uh, France this many opportunities in a 22. They are going to do something. That came forward <laughs> off a green Touch flare. Goal. So France, again, not too convincing at the line-out, but they have won it. But what they have lost is ground, and Olivon tries to regain some of it. Aldrin is right in there to carry forward. Look at that for a carry. It's created the offside. Cyril by suddenly... France fine there. In a spirit here, the heart that we know exists within this side. They're pumping, and here's Antonio. Luku into midfield it goes. Aldrich again. Luku, they're calling on this side. My father wants it, the winger. It's not coming to him just yet. Fiku, Arden looking nervous for the first time in the match, calling for extra defenders. Pedos come across, but look at that from Keenan. He drove him right back. Right back there, but it was advantage being played. Now Ireland have to regroup quickly and be right on it to face again. Well, penalty advantage or not, what a tackle from Hugo Keenan that was. Fantastic shot. I think Hugo's given all of himself to that tackle. Every bit of his body. Okay, it looks in a little bit of discomfort okay, down there. He's, he's only one lift in front. Okay, they said that, uh, the information was a good contest. I think considering Time what Keenan gave to that challenge, we can feel this is a genuine need for assistance, although it's not a bad time for Ireland to get a little bit of a breather. Okay, make sure we're back ten. Absolutely, wait, wait, wait. and the less as he goes rubbed himself back into running himself back into position there. France going for the line out again. Again, flats Ireland. Do they go for this? Does it work for them the last couple of times? Do they try and disrupt? You'd imagine they would. It's actually not a great kick. I mean, it wasn't far from the touchline. He's managed to put it eight metres out instead of five. Just gives his team a bit more work to do. And this is why, as we're praising Ireland, it's only right to point out these uncharacteristic errors from France that keep appearing in their game, but they are seemingly being able to go a bit deeper here now as we go deep in this first half but spoiling tactics from Ireland are not liked by the referee now Barker just takes it on almost up to the line as Ireland turned to face again they only just stopped him there Tygburn doing an awful lot of good work there to help resist that was excellent muscle from him but Talking of muscle, there goes Antonio, back with Luku, Jalibert, here it is, Pedro. And once again we see France as the irresistible force. And that's not just the team, it's the crowd as well. What a response from the French to losing a man to a red card. Wave after wave of power. Superb from that man, Damien Peno, who can't help but score. Comes out of nowhere. You wouldn't think they're a man down. Sparked by Malvaca, steaming onto that penalty. Loads of momentum, loads of quick ball, loads of aggression, loads of space. Finally, a bit of patience from France. And he get the quick ball from Malvaca, he gets over the gain line, condense all the Irish team in, and then just simple catch pass. Bit of acceleration from Penno, straight through the gap. Lovely, classic French movement. And perhaps most importantly, it shows to France what they can do with 14. Damien Penno is now the leading try scorer in this championship for France, overtaking Serge Blanco, Philippe Bernard Sal. Tom Ramos gets the flags up in the air again. Now, the last time France were behind at half time at home. 2018 versus Ireland. Of course, Ireland won that one. 35 home tests since then. They are behind, but they are back in it. Half time score in Marseille. France 10, Ireland 7.
Our coverage of the Guinness Six Nations continues tomorrow afternoon here on ITV1. Mark Pugach and the team will be in Rome as a New Look England squad start their campaign against Italy. Join us live from the Stadio Olimpico from half past one. But we've got a game in our hands here in Marseille. Fabien Galtier at halftime with some key messages uh, for his team. Benjamin, what does he want to see from this French team in this second half? He's going to want to see ball possession, put Ireland under pressure, provoke some uh, some lack of discipline on their side. He's going to want to see some aggressivity and definitely stand up to the challenge that is going to be to try to overcome this very, very dominant Irish side. Seeing Paul O'Connell there talking to McCarthy, he's in a decent first half, but so too is Jack Crowley. Oh, he definitely has. I think from a, an early charge sign, you, you sort of you always wonder in these big occasions, and he has stepped up really well, shown brilliant temperament, mixed the game up with with short kicks, passing game. Uh, look, I've been really, really impressed with him. Yeah, he's been excellent. Just, again, like I said before, simplicity. He doesn't have to do anything magical, but Ireland just need to hold on to the ball. They really need to own this possession piece. Great stuff. OK, time to hand you back to your commentary team. Gordon Darcy and David Flatman are alongside Miles Harris. Thanks, Joe. Team's out then, as you can see, and I can't see any changes there from uh, either team. One thing that won't change for France is that they will be without Paul Willemsen for the rest of the match. Sent off in the 32nd minute for his second yellow card offence. That man, Gregory Aldrich, the new captain, talking to Carl Dixon, the referee, who made those calls, knows that his side, therefore, have still got an awful lot of work to do in this match, despite their try on the stroke of half-time. Temperature dropping, it's been lovely today, about 15, 16 degrees sunshine from the off. Ireland, of course, have been training in the Elgarve. And it's been around about 2021. 20, but it is a perfect night for rugby. Okay. Referral for the bunker. The yellow card has been upgraded to a red card, a high degree of danger, and no mitigation. Okay, thank you. So okay, that was happening during okay, half on. time, and that now being commuted, communicated to the captain that it was a red anyway. The two yellows, of course, made the red. We'll have implications possibly okay, for Willem, sir, with the amount of time that he will. Uh, have to sit on the sidelines after this game. Yeah, it's interesting to see how France manage that. They lose a bit of ballast in the tight, of course, or a lot of ballast in the tight. Just the substitutions they might or might, might or might not make in the next 10 or 15 minutes, how they manage their line out. You see, they're just having a little quick chat now. It's just taken a couple of seconds longer. Now, Vaca's just taken a bit longer to get in position. They'll have rejig things at half time. They have to figure out, that's it, in a nutshell, Flats. Everything, every other the scrum, they could probably get by with. They have to figure out how to win this ball. Maybe they have. It's fascinating, these opening exchanges in this second half. See how France okay, no, done. try to play it. Barnage. That'll help. Really good that from the You're French. On the outside, then you move through. You might, it may be a little double bluff there. Ireland thinking, well, they want to keep it away. They've lost the length, so they're not going to maul us, they're not going to scrum us. France might have said, we'll give them exactly what they don't expect. Really good mauling, really good momentum. Very little surprise, Ramos going over, picking up that ball, well within his range. Um, I got to take the three points. It was interesting there, you could see Luku was there. Uh, Looking for Moafana down the short side, once the penalty advantage was given, he was kind of looking at him going, where were you, where are you? There's an opportunity to go down there. We, so the mindset is going to be still there from the French to keep attacking, but they're going to take three points with a kicker like this any time uh, Ireland okay. offered them. As long as they move it. You might have watched that replay of the line-out and thought, well, it wasn't quite straight, but actually it kind of didn't really benefit France, did it? Because it almost went over Ireland's side, and I always think, well... If it's sort of marginal-ish and the opposition aren't even jumping for it, you should be allowed to carry on. If they've taken to the air and it's not fair and it's gone the wrong way, that's a different thing. Well, the end result is the penalty against McCarthy, but it's not three points for the leading 
point scorer in the competition last season. Only one behind Owen Farrell at the World Cup as well, Tom Ramos. He can't add three there. And France can ill afford those chances to get away from their grasp. Here is Ramos. Aldrich into Sheehan and does well there actually to absorb the tackle. It was Francois Cross. Aldrich again. And it was Cross again. Here's Dante. Lukou switching, finding Bai, who is remarkably calm in those situations. Now, Porter's going to win a penalty. I think his hands actually went beyond there. He did support his body weight a bit, but he's got that call to go his way. Just remind him, missed a couple of those tonight. Yeah, I think, you know, we've the benefit of looking at it from this side. Obviously, the ref is on the far side of the rook and probably looks OK from that side. I think you are right initially. Porter's hands have definitely gone beyond the ball. But, listen, it was... Uh, it was a it was a clear a clear opportunity for Ireland. And to be fair, the assistant on this side, he's got the benefit of looking as well as us, and he's locked near up. Okay. Left hand okay. on the floor. So yeah, it's a case for, for it. Your plays are still going to drag him onto the wrong side. France were just losing okay. a bit of shape then. It was just getting a little bit ragged. Cyril Bai didn't really want that ball. Got it standing still, got mobbed. I can all these situations. It's the official's judgment, which is final, get on with it. Both sides. It's the nature of the game, nature of sport. He's Gibson Park. He thinks there might be something on the blind side. Peter Omani turns back towards his colleagues and does well. Crowley to Van der Fleer. Then it's Bundyaki. Nice step, strong step that he's got with those powerful legs that he pushes off. Robbie Henshaw. Doesn't lack for leg power himself. There's McCarthy again. Really has been abrasive. An excellent first half and looks to continue in the second. Caelan Doris, who's been doing it time and time again in an Irish jersey. As Ireland look to establish a little bit of control here. The top of the second half, McCarthy again. Gibson Park again. Lowe gets involved. They're getting ever closer nice. here. Really strong carrying. Intelligent lines as well that they keep cutting. On from Keenan out to Henshaw. He's got Nash outside. Henshaw's trying to shimmy his way through. He gets the offload in, and here is Nash. He's in. Islander in. It's wonderfully worked. And look at the joy from the team. For the new man. A score that was oozing rugby intellect. Robbie Henshaw take a bow. The carries, plural, from Joe McCarthy. Fantastic, that one in particular. But here, Robbie Henshaw, it's a two-on-two. -two. He gets to the deck, you just think he's got to get that ball away, and he just waits that split second. It's clever, he's calm. It's the perfect little pop off the deck to Caelan Doris. Brilliant continuity play from Henshaw. Outstanding attack from Ireland. Yeah, but it's exactly what happens. That powerful carry by McCarthy breaks one tackle, rides a second tackle, that terminal carry over the gain line. What do France do? Honeypot in around the defensive line. Ireland have the ambition, two wide passes. And as you said, Flats, that lovely pop off the ground, perfectly timed. Lovely run into the corner. Jack Crowley from the touchline. Oh, he's hit that one all right. He's hit it more than all right. It is excellent. The newbies are contributing in full. They really are, and I tell you what, a carry like that, like McCarthy's, that just breaks the line just a bit by a metre or two, all the other defenders out wide, they see that. And it's just a little moment of readjustment, of panic. You honeypot a little bit, you narrow up, and as soon as they did it, Ireland said, move it wide, wide, wide and it worked, very clever indeed. 
said how clever a score that was, but you need the bodies, you need the skills to go with it. It was the full package there from Ireland. And away by Gibson Clark. Nothing flash when it was needed just to do the right thing. Yeah, and it's probably worth mentioning Robbie Henshaw getting having coming through a period of a lot of injuries, not starting a lot in the World Cup last year, probably has yes, a lot of injuries last year, but his involvements today defensively, both sides of the ball, two crucial little moments of the build-up to both tries, Gibson Parks, was that little tip on for uh, his centre partner, Aki, and again there, just getting that ball up, to keep the ball alive for Caelan Doris for Calvin Nash's try. Stunned the crowd, there's a murmur around the velodrome here. Normally that roar. I haven't really heard it apart from the final few minutes of the first half, such as being the dominance of the Irish display. Dominating in the air that time, Shah Olivon is offloaded well. Cyril Bai gives it to Ine Antonio. France can erase that island try straight away. They won't feel too much damage, maybe. And Ofana, they still know how much lies in front of them. They can't get away from that fact. Gabriak. Fiku. Skipping and also offloading. And I answer again. McCarthy picks up the loose ball. Look at Gibson Park, little Terry that he is. So much hustle okay. from Ireland, Using making it so hard for France to make so any ground. That was a bit loose from McCarthy. Cleaned up by Gibson Park. Okay. The little Using man's got please. a massive heart, hasn't he? And here he sets himself again for one of his famous box kicks. A little chip in behind that time, just mixing it up. That goes forward. Creating the offside, it did. System right in line that time, so too the referee. Back by Blue, then entry. Very close, his hand is in there. The ref stick staying with his decision, which is just that moment like that, the little decisions like going against the French, you can just see the change in body language now for the French and I'm pretty sure Fabien Galtier is going to want to make a few substitutions based on this. Woke of the crowd, at not No, it has, yeah, but I don't think he's done it for a knock-on. I mean, it's very, very loud, by the way, here. I think he's actually for side entry after the Sorry. fact. But, yeah, the, the locals appear upset. It's a penalty against Green 10. Oh, now it's been called through from Ben Whitehouse. Contact in the air by Green 10. That's the information to set. Constitutes foul play, contact in the air, so referee brings them back for that. And the crowd. Let's say they're happy again. They're not in a happy state tonight, far from it, but they are appeased. And Jani has taken that about. Eight metres past the penalty mark, but good on him. Yes, yeah, pretty poor. Like for an outside half, the guy who's giving it—if you're you're not going to be going for it in a game like this—if you want to go for it, just give it to Ramos, give somebody else to step up. That needs to be 15 metres closer. In five. It's been a bit jittery the French line out. That's understandably in the absence of Villemsen. No, we're far enough. Staying on his feet long enough there to allow Luku to go in. And it's Cyril by. <laughs> Through offside, that was pretty blatant as well. Tyg Burn. Ball around, affected the nine. Crowd want the numbers to be Two evened up here. Side, affected ball placement. I think actually, I'm not sure Tyg Burn was offside. I think there's someone in the way. There's another Irish body not moving out of the way, which impairs, it slows down. Maxime Luku, the French scrum half, so 
ultimately can't get it away as quick as he wanted to because there's someone in the way. And it's probably, you know, as I said, Luku's not had the best best of times at the back of the at the back of the rocks, the malls. Ireland had a chance to focus on him. They don't have that much on the bat on the bench in uh, in terms of experience, so you're gonna have to stick with them. Still a long time to go here. It was well contested the line out, but France have won it and they are on point again, like they were at the end of the first half, and they score some points. They've got another penalty. Finkel goes himself. Pano will look so dangerous on his own on this side, but of course it's initially coming nowhere near him. Olivon has a go. Can they get it to the line? Gabriel thought he might have, doesn't. Referee blows his whistle, players diving on it. Trying to show to the referee that it's theirs. Just whether he bubbles it. I think he has ground it. So, it's okay, just okay, right. We've got clips. There's six claps in the all to start with. Yes. So, after the try, six will go to the bin to claps in the mall near the line. Okay, so we have uh, on field decision try. So, we just need to check the grounding, please. This could be a double whammy for Ireland as well. Peter Omani in trouble as well as you heard. Time's up here. Well, Peter Omani collapsing the French Mall was clear as day. Keep your eyes on him here, you see him in the middle there. Watch him now, there he goes. It might not necessarily be all him, I... but it's definitely the right There's call right in front of the yeah, ref. Telling... Just whether they ground I'm this. telling the director this is not what I want. So just waiting for the clips of... Uh... Just to let you know, Carl, I told the director this is not what we want. Okay, so we are just waiting for the clips of uh, Gabrielag having a pop down the short side of Duzzy. Because the on-field decision is a try, isn't it? I think the French director just loves malls, and you can't yeah. blame him. They're fun. Clearly, he loves uh, them. Clearly, a uh, type five. Sorry, uh, Dicko. Um, this is it coming up. Here we go then. Try or no try just has to touch any part of the line when in contact with the ball in the grounding. Any bit will do, it certainly comes loose after that, or after what, I should say. There's definitely isn't a hand underneath it, does he have so control of this? evidence to overturn the on-field decision, so take your time, Ben. Still has control. Well, the on-field decision is try, so it's got to be clear and obvious reason to overturn it. I don't see one. Two seconds. Jordan Way, the assistant, was in perfect position. He was pretty sure that's why Carl Dixon was having to go with on-field decision of try. And it's brave from the big man. It's pretty much the first thing they teach you at a rugby ball is don't lead with the rugby ball, putting it out there. So if he gets away with this... We're just going to have a look at it once more. Anything to refute the on-field decision, though, that's the key here. Apart from for the French director, would love to show the uh, collapse ball again. Oh, it's so tight. So, Carl, can you hear me? Uh, you have a ground in, yes? OK, so I haven't got any overwhelming evidence to overturn your on-field decision due to the obscured view, so stick with your on-field decision. This is going to get very tasty now. <laughs> and some of the crowd also realising that Ireland's captain has gone to the Simbin for 10 minutes as well. The slow trudge off for Peter Omani, so that evens up the numbers. The scoreboard is not level yet, but it's on its way as far as France are concerned, and they've just brought on four replacements, including Fosolo Tuilangi, as off goes Omani, Marchand, Wadi, Aldegheri, 
to Ilangi, four big men. No bomb squad. <laughs> big old food bill just came on here in Marseille. Keep the receipt for that one. Here's Ramos. Oh, that's a big one. Class. What a kick. What a kick. Really good line out drill. Uncontested has. Keep your eyes on Omani there. He may have had someone go underneath him, but if it wasn't him, it was someone else collapsing it. France were motoring. It was deliberately taken down. Well, clearly enough taken down by green jerseys. The yellow card stands, it's the right call. Big moments. A big momentum shift now for France. Those changes off the back of seven points. We've got a serious game on our hands now. Ireland just taking their time. Never seen a restart take this long. Oh, and through goes Nash from the restart. Already got his first international try for Paul Gabriag. It is a, a try scoring return to international rugby and a night of contrast for him with Paul Willems. So the other Paul in the second row, the man sent off. Calvin Nash did well, very nearly did very well indeed, but that's a little bit loose from France. The pod went up, it never felt like the pod was going to take that ball in mid-air, but Aldri has to do a better job. He's got to pile into that as if the pod isn't there without colliding with his own men. And he was a bit speculative underneath that and just allowed a bit of space for Nash to come into. And France got away with that a bit. And Calvin Nash did something similar down Two. in uh, Toulon a couple of weeks ago. Little crossfield kick, two players waiting for it, straight Five. between them underneath the bin. Almost replicated it Six. there for the, uh, for the monster man. There's plenty of new weight in that. No Omani, of course, no Willemse for a long time. And for a long time, France were nothing like they are now in this game. Different beast here. Well, if you're in the island front row, if you're Andrew Porter, and you see Dorian Aldegheri come off the bench, you know exactly what's coming. He ain't here to score tries and throw miss passes. He's big. Technically excellent, very aggressive. He's got one job and he just did it. Very, very hard to resist. Stick to Alangi behind him. Hard work, huge amount of weight. Stick Dante on the flank as well. Yeah, again, huge man. And he looks genuinely like he knows what he's doing. He's really adding something to that scrummaging effort. He's not there making up the numbers. Shoulders in a good spot, lots of leg drive. That's punchy. Relishing, just like you would have done, Gordon. <laughs> Without the flair. Here's Van der Fleer. It is almost getting to gloves off moment here now. And Marseille loves those. Gibson Park again. And that's got a bit of a swirl on it. Wind has picked up. It does. But well, used to when there wasn't the roof really whip into the stadium. Just wonder how it can get to that low level now. But you can feel it on our faces up top here. Yeah, Ireland kind of getting, I suppose, disrupting France by going after their line out. But they're struggling a little bit in that midfield of the game. You can see Jack Crowley he's dropped it off to uh, Bondiaki. He's looking around to try and build the kick. He's left it to, Bo to uh, Gibson Park and just too long on that. But Ireland kicking off the back foot there and not as comfortable in the second half of the kicking game at all. Fiku to Dante, that's a good ship on to Ramos, but look at that from James Lowe, tracking ball. man and ball. And trying to hold up in the air as well, he's got the turnover. Absolutely brilliant from the winger there. We should head down to the touchline because amidst miss all the noise now. Where was it in the first half? Well, that was down to Ireland. It's a different place down there, Benjamin, now, isn't it? Ah, it's absolutely rocking. Uh, seven points per, you know, the, the man mountain, Posulo Tuilegi coming on. Now you're going to see every ruck is going to count. Every decision of, of the ref is going to be yelled at. Every impact is going to be multiplied by 60,000, you know, French people which is going behind their team. But that's what it's going to take to overcome this, this very, very, very efficient uh, Irish side. 
So look, it's, 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 a, it's a game of collisions, and if you, you win most of them, and then you seize your opportunities to score some points, you're going to win. So, long way to go, but an exciting one. Is that the key for you, stripping the emotion out of it? Is it just about who wins that game line collision? No, definitely soak up the, the passion, soak up the emotion, and use it to fuel your body, because they're going to need a lot of energy to overcome those Irish. But it's, uh, it's, it's still, it's seven points seems just, you know, within, within uh, reach, but it's still a long, long way to go. Let's go again, let's go again. Ireland here at the set scrum won't be looking for any heroics, but they don't want the scrum to become an issue. You don't want to give the French pack with 60 odd thousand behind them the chance to get their tails up up front. They just need this to be solid, incident free, ball away. All that. Re engage. Free kick. France. Re engage. A little bit too pumped Hooker, there. Tight head. That's Al de Gary, super keen to get to work, get amongst it. Just got to keep his balance. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. They really are taking their time, aren't they, Ireland? Every chance they get, they're slowing it down, eking out that yellow card. And Gary Owen up from uh, Crowley. Big up and under on Penno, and he can't take it. Van der Fleer can. Carnage. Is this Ireland's Locked chance on. now to swing it back much more in their way than it is oh still? God. Low held up that time, but he did really well to offload. Porter goes yeah. down. Gibson Park has it. Crowley now. looks so calm and collected. Real aspect to his game. We need to try and stay in that space if he can. Holding the space no, in no. midfield and doing really well on the floor was Bundy Aki. That was important. Tyke Byrne carries well again. Gibson Park. Keenan up from fullback. Garnage. Crowley, the ball, another advantage. One. Bit of obstruction off the ball. This is Robbie Henshaw. Shows it twice, now gives it to Sheehan. And we know he could move a motor in those situations. Still Gibson Kennedy Park Garnage. onto Crowley. Little shimmy again. Lovely from Byrne, like he was the fly half too. On from low and into midfield, and the carry is strong. Ireland doing all things right once more. Can they find another finish? It would be their bonus point score. Here's Keenan trying to go on the outside on that loop. Trying to create an arc that he just saw. The chance to create. Here's Gibson Park back to Crowley. Again, that slight delay. He's bundled to the floor, but Gibson Park once more. Robbie Henshaw. Ireland really have thrown it all at France at times tonight. Now France pile through and bodies lying all over that. They're trying to disrupt. Referees having none of it. There was a penalty offside. on this side against Penno. His absolute last-minute defence from France. 14. Eventually spilling over, Ireland getting 14. the penalty. But so many times, just last-ditch tackle. Caelan Doris in the wide channel, desperately trying to get his hands free. Yeah. Two men Caelan, over, free, captain. but they just managed to hold him up. Again, Hugo Keane and Robbie Henshaw in the wider channels, just getting enough to force the penalty, not getting over the line. Getting the penalty now, Jack Crowley going for the corner, and they will want to get another seven-pointer here, or five-pointer, and get the bonus point. Five. Time to calm it down again. Bundy! From the island set-piece to get this right. Ball. Fine, McCarthy, can they get it going on that angle? They have! Sheehan is in. They are still riding high. What a place to win this would be. It's not done, but that really helps. They've decimated the French mall. France stay on the ground, so the ball's easily won. And you were right, Miles, it was time to calm it down, but as soon as they hit the deck, it's up-tempo. They're not waiting to get set. They're hitting and going, wherever a soft edge is, find it. Pump the legs, rip through, give it everything, taken by surprise. And boy, did it work. Yeah, Four French players all targeting the same area of the mould, and they all just shear off to the side, pretty much putting that on a silver plate for Ireland. Dan Sheehan popping out the side.
Just that one miss. So much that he's done right. Can he add another from here? Crowley again. It is way beyond his years, way beyond his experience. It's a brilliant kick, that. Fantastic kick. Really well taken try. Really punchy from the Irish pack. Dynamic and efficient. They look very well coached indeed. What a kick that was from Crowley. France changing again. We can see Cameron Wocky coming on to join the pack. Also Paul Boudouin, both sides going for that 6-2 split on the bench. Six forwards, two backs, of course. And Nolan Legalek is on as well. So too Louis Biel Biere into the back line. And multiple changes as friends try and somehow change things up in a positive direction for them. So there's an awful lot of talk before the match about two players not being present here tonight, Johnny Sexton and obviously Anton Dupont, and you kind of feel Ireland have been a much more settled team without um, a player, and France, from a large part of this game, looking a little bit rudderless. Keenan chasing, and it was Boudouin who went back. The Garek to Wadi. Made his debut here again, South Africa on this ground in the autumn of 2022. That's gone. And that is knocked on when there was so much in front of this French team, of course. The World Cup now just a memory. A tough one, one that will live with them. Hold on, balance, please, balance. Of course, forever. Green, but here was a chance to reset, and it's Ireland doing the positive reset. They haven't quite reset yet, have they, France? I'll try from this side. I think rudderless is a. I'm sure he'll do. Is about the right word, Gordon. I think they've also they've just been inaccurate. The they've looked rusty, inaccurate. The thing is, the problem is I wasn't sure if he tackled and got back to his feet, so I let. Nothing's looked terribly fluent, really, bar the odd lovely moment. It's looked a bit scrappy, it's looked a little bit devoid of shape. So much, of course, in France, so much responsibility for that shape given to the scrum half, whereas Seconds. traditionally in Ireland and in England, most of that most of that shape is offered by the fly half. Jalibert really, he hasn't had a bad game, we haven't said much about him, and Luku hasn't been given the chance to assert his normal control on the game that we're used to seeing when he plays for Bordeaux. Yeah, but you directly compare Luku and Jemson Gibson Park, and it's been largely night and day. Yep. Gibson Park has been the tempo, the beat of Ireland, really on in tone with what his forwards are doing and the backs. The replacement front row for Ireland, trusted as well. Ronan Kelleher, Kian Healy, Finley Bealham. See James oh. Ryan stripped oh. off, about to come on. What a man to be able to bring on as well. Play the way! And he lost his place to McCarthy, and how McCarthy has taken that opportunity. Gibson Park wide, it goes to Nash and Nash. Pumping away with those legs. Tackle was good. First man, show the ball. And France have got it back, though. What a turnover that was. Was that Marchand in there? It was. Fantastic. Marchand to Alangi. It was pretty. In the tackle, stripped it as he was in midair. Sean is there again. Yeah, go now, go. Tua he was certainly involved. Just 19 years of age, remember. 150 kilograms. It's the really Antonio weights that we always quote. <laughs> Tua Lange's got that as well. Gibson Park, majestic behind his forwards today. Low, that's really superb hands. Keenan's little chip, you could see what he was trying to do. And it's like a nice little, uh, nice little chip in from behind from... Oh, it's Legarek with the turnover. Yeah. There's also a hint of a bit, of, bit of hand on the deck, but geez, a tiny little bloke just off the bench, that was a brilliant bit of work, jackaling work at the breakdown. 
applause for Joe McCarthy. He's been replaced by the man Five. had the space in the side for so long. James Ryan, captain in Paris a couple of years ago. Top line-out stealer in the Six Nations last season. That good. Went to his 50th cap in the February meeting. The season's classic between these two. We only do classics these days. That's excellent on the chase from France this time. It's Fiku to Tenno. Again, an unusual mistake from him. It's the pressure that this Irish defence just puts on the opposition. The line speed is something to be admired. It really is. But it also just shows the... I suppose the margins, how fine they are. You see that ball here, we're going in, everything done right. Oh, Gail Fuku, he spotted the pace. No now, clear. Penno's either just got his timing a step wrong, but that's the difference between that ball being out in front, him hitting it at full tilt, in much the same way that uh, Calvin Nash did in the first half, where he gets the ball, doesn't have to break strides, then we drop it onto his go, foot, and it leads to, uh, leads to a try. But just that passing, the sharpness, the crispness, it hasn't been there. I suppose for this match to be truly elevated to classic status, it will need the French recovery, but Ireland will say, we'll just be happy with classic performance, thanks very much. Crouch! Bind! Set! Oh. To do this to France in Marseille. It will rank right up there. Jack Coden's on as well with Ryan Baird into that Irish pack. And this time Gibson Park is quite happy just to put his foot on Jameson, the ball. He's got no. the call. Should be five seconds and then use. And within that five seconds, up goes low. Back off you. It Take was it off Penno though. Le Garrett gets it wide to Jalibert. He loves it when it opens up and he'll need to love it here. Biel Biore takes them on up that touchline, the speedster. And he's still only 20. Scored two tries on this ground against Namibia in the Rugby World Cup. It's Fiku to uh, Penno. What a step. That was just something else. Boudoir. The glide on that. Delicious from Penno. To Ilangi. Back to Ramos. Here's Jalibert. They're still going for it here. So, of course. They should, and we knew they would. Here's Gibson Park. Ireland trying to seek the safety of that touchline, and well, they've got it. In a more secure position to stay away from it. Just never felt like that kick through was the right option. They were doing so well, ball in hand, had Ireland stretched. Recycling it really nicely. It was beautiful footwork from Peno. It's just that feel for the game, when to actually keep going for the juggler, when to do the... And you never want to take that out of a player's uh, armour. You want him to be able to come to a kick in the ball, but you need it to be when, the right time, so you're not just ceding possession to the opposition. Abdel Benazi, 80 caps for France there in the now. second row, back row. I happen to know that because I played with him. <laughs> Thank God you are old. Yeah, well, I was 18, <laughs> he was about 45 when we played together, actually. Nine. Not sure he'd remember me. He was immense, as was that, was that really collision. Good. Goodness me. So I won't tell you about the trial commentator on from Benazi, Parc de Prince, that old. <laughs> France against England. You're just a pup. Just a pup. Having a little bit of trouble here. 
with a full bat at this stage. Franz, the freshman. In some pain. Yeah, he's actually struggling. He's walking all right, but he's just struggling to actually get off the field. Looks in that much discomfort. Poor guy. Okay, mate. Time back on. Let's go. Poor man. Yes, I have He's off the field now, took him a while, wish him well. Here's Jalabert to Tuilagi. He's been ripping it up at under 20 level, taking players with him for fun. Smashing them on his back, trying to stop him. Family trait. It's just a good example of where Ireland have been targeting rooks at various different points in the set plays. They're kind of disrupting the French tempo. They're getting a couple of quick rooks, but then they target another one, manage to slow it down and get back into the defensive point. And France have really struggled to continually build momentum. Top energy from Cyril Bai coming back off the bench. Adder a lot here. Look at right. If it goes to Bai, it's some motor that prop. And consider what happens to him. At the set piece. But they started to look like they were going nowhere there, France. And that's how it ended up. Again, a lot of times when they've actually put a few phases together, it hasn't necessarily been that difficult. Both players' hips, heads below hips, going to ground. So we need to up. In terms of decision making for Ireland to defend, and the more phases Ireland have successfully defended, the more breakdowns they've hustled at. France have just lost it's shape more and more. Well, it's the same principle every time you can see Jack Crowley off the speed bump. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at best, at best. Uh, Good decision, mate. We had a shadow of a doubt. Um, but France having to over resource more rooks, Ireland having to put less defenders in, and then they just eventually run out of numbers and Ireland just swamp them in, a, in, a, in attack. And that's just what happens when you lose a player into the, into the you know, through a red card and through sin bins as the game goes on. Colin Murray on that far side. Eventually, Gibson Park's motor has oh, maybe run out, maybe not. He is an incredible talent. And D. Farrell, of course, has been given the head coach role with the Lions in Australia in 2025. And I'll tell you what, Gibson Park ain't going to be far away from that test side. Yeah, you struggled to leave him at home, wouldn't you? He's got his boots. Just before this scrum, just let's tell you what's coming up tomorrow. Six Nations action continues on this opening weekend. It's great to be back, isn't it? Italy against England. That's live on ITV1 and STV starting at 1.30. Mark Pugach leads the team in Rome. And then, of course, next weekend, round two. England-Wales, Saturday, 4 p.m. We're on air for that. Ireland, Italy on the Sunday, 2.15, all ITV1 and STV. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Take him back. Hold, hold. Thank you. Offsets Ramos. Trying to inspire something that puts France within range. Possibly a draw. Try bonus each. Would end the Grand Slam hopes, but the uh, title would be very much alive. Still, of course, will be that. He's not over on round one, but Ireland will be very well placed, having won this, if that's what they do. And now they chase here with Keenan putting his head down, and Jalibert's got no choice. That's got to go out. Ireland in control, just over six minutes to go. That's a big tackle by James Ryan, absolutely. The talisman player, the France of Hope, uh, bringing Tulangi on to make those big contacts. He's got the big run up into it. And James Ryan, perfect technique, nice and low, hits him, gets him to the ground. The shoulder will feel that tomorrow, but then Ireland get in, rob the ball. Jack Conan, knowing exactly what to do, drop it on the foot, and lovely counter punch there from Ireland.
And they know they can seal the deal here, sort it all out. Murray, too low to Crowley, who stays out there, and so he should. Murray, the experienced man alongside him now, 113 caps. And he's just feeling one out play, just that first receiver just takes it forward. Crossfield kick from Crowley. Remember how his game started with that charge down. Back that down. seems a long time ago. Even that had no effect on him whatsoever. Lagarek. And Crowley's there, covering every blade. Nash. He's brave, isn't he? He really does charge into contact. Absolutely took the words out of my mouth, Miles. His acceleration into contact is fantastic. That's what you want from your wingers. He is down on the ground here, so hopefully nothing too serious, maybe just a dead leg. But that acceleration is what you want from your wing. He's the pace man. He's going to try and run that off best he can. No player wants to leave a field, but especially a young player just breaking through. But he will be looked at by the physio. No point causing further damage. The carry from Jack Conan. Crowley hasn't got a right winger in place there because Nash is hobbling. Back goes Crowley again. And we'll say it again. He looks so calm. I think he'll be really pleased with how it's gone. So will his coaches, low in behind referee. In front of the kicker. It's Fiku who's given away. A, 13 blue offside. In a way, needless penalty, but of course, France are in a desperate situation. They need to make something happen. They do, yeah. They do. And I, I think, again, Crowley will be really happy with how the night's gone. It hasn't been perfect. Not every option was perfect, but so what? 14 points up, and I think a couple of the, considering the. The kick he missed in the first half, I think a couple of those conversions in the second half, particularly important, keep that scoreboard ticking over. He's done really well. But Joe McCarthy, though. Joe McCarthy, he properly turned up, properly turned up as Ireland go for the corner. Good on him. Interesting call. The only way back in here for France to get something out of the game is a couple of... Tries to okay. conversions, easy said, not okay, very off. easily done. But the aggressive call again for Ireland, not just the three points to absolutely lock them out. The opposition, no big, big call. I think somebody was advocating yeah, for uh, three points, and Kalen Doris was very quick to say, No, let's go for the corner, we keep going. And I think that's a mindset piece, and uh, that is a very happy, happy young man. And I know his brother who is the uh, head of people back in Leinster Rugby, oh, will be very, once. very proud of his uh, older brother. One of the reasons why they would have gone towards the corner is because of the strength of them all, of Irish rugby. In these situations, they have done it again. Absolutely the right call because it says to France, it says to the rest of the competition, as Ronan Kelleher is the beneficiary this time, that Ireland are at the moment the best. They are back. Ronan Kelleher takes the points, but I tell you what, they couldn't have done it without James Lowe. Came off the left wing, piled in there, added some power. Love the celebration. Kean Healy as well, they're steaming through the middle. I watch that and I think they just look so well coached, so well prepared. That was verging on perfection. Yeah, it's embarrassing though when wingers celebrate more tries. It's their moment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a new experience for them. <laughs> and it, 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 you're right, maybe they shouldn't actually, it's not for them. But yeah. it, he was in there, he added something. He's not it just is. making up the numbers. Yeah. They look a very well prepared pack indeed. It's the most points Ireland have scored against France, beating their total last year. It smashes their biggest win in France. It smashed this French team out of sight tonight. Not held by the sending off, but... As Crowley gets another two points 
to crown a quite wonderful night for him on a personal level. But the sense of team in this Irish squad will trump that feeling. And that seems to be the, the overriding difference between the two of them. Lads, he talked about this beforehand, it's not two teams in rebuilding, but just this Irish team looks more settled and they've picked up more from the World Cup than France have. And just missing key players, their heartbeat, their tempo, just not there, the accuracy not there. So many things just hasn't clicked for the, this French team tonight. Obviously the red card exasperates all of that, but there's been a few things, the first 36 minutes weren't clicking for them either. Well worth the journey back to France for these Hi, Irish supporters. Hold it on. Those who were loved by the French public in the World Cup and all that they brought. Marching forward 10 metres won't hurt Ireland. Not now from this penalty. France have got nothing to play for here but pride. No, and France absolutely haven't been on it, they haven't looked great. As we've said, ragged, disjointed, rusty, lacking cohesion, whatever, and how much of that is to do with the Irish pressure, the pressure of the scoreboard continually ticking over. You could debate that forever. Ireland looked fantastic, France the opposite. And again, another line-out. Consistently going wrong for France tonight, it's the fourth line-out. And that is it. Epitomizes the night in a way that this island team continues to do across the board in matches like this very special things and to win in Marseille to start the 2024 Six Nations after all they've been through is truly special. Maybe it is because of all they have been through. A championship, even a, another Grand Slam, won't make up for World Cup agony. But a successful season in this famous old competition will keep this squad and help this squad move on. And tonight represents the perfect start for Ireland to the championship. It is one of their best ever wins. We'll review it all shortly with a very happy Brian and Rory alongside Benjamin with Jill. Ireland comprehensive winners on the opening night. Cheers again.